Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, machine learning, optimization, mechatronics, robotics, etc. In this video tutorial we explain how to simulate a state space model of a dynamical system in Simulink. To make the long story short, to illustrate the simulation procedure we use this example. This is a mass spring damper system driven by the force F. The force F is the input and the output is the position or the distance of the mass from the equilibrium point. First, we will derive a state space model given by the equation 5 and 6. Then, we will simulate this state space model in Simulink and here's the model. And finally, we will compare the Simulink result with the results obtained by simulating the system by using a MATLAB script that you can see over here. Before I start with the explanations, I would like to mention the following. In this video tutorial, I deliberately used the harder way for modeling and simulating a state space model in Simulink. I'm using this harder way since this harder way is more instructive and it can teach you how to model a differential equation in Simulink. Also, the harder way that I will explain in this video tutorial is very useful for simulating nonlinear state space models. And finally, it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this free video tutorial as well as almost 300 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube page. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. The first step is to obtain a state space model of our system. Our system consists of a mass damper and a spring and we have the force F that's applied to the mass. The force F can move in the horizontal direction and can drive the mass. X represents the distance of the mass from its equilibrium point. The mass spring damper system is quite general and in practice it can be used to represent a number of physical systems. For example, it can model mechanical, electrical or even economic systems. And that's why I selected this relatively simple system for explaining how to model its state space model in Simulink. By using second Newton's law, we obtain a differential equation describing the motion of our system. The equation is given over here. In this equation, m is the mass, kd is the damper constant, ks is the spring constant, x double dot is the second derivative of x with respect to time and x dot is the first derivative of x with respect to time. There are two approaches for obtaining a model of this system that can be used for control. The first approach is to go to the Laplace domain and consequently if we take the Laplace transform of the left hand side and the right hand side of this equation we obtain the equation number two and from the equation number two we can obtain the transfer function. However, we will not be using the transfer functions in this video tutorial. Instead, we are using the state space model. To obtain the state space model, we need to introduce the state space variables. The first, first state space variable is x1 and x1 is equal to x, that is the position of the mass. The second state space variable is x2 that is, it's equal to the first derivative of position and the first derivative of position is velocity. Combining the equation number 4 with our model given by the equation number 1, we obtain the state space model. In this state space model, A and B are system matrices. We can see the structure of these system matrices and U is our input. We consider the force, that is the external force, as the input to the system. Let us form the output equation. Here you have an additional degree of freedom. Here I assume that I have a sensor that measures the distance of our mass from its equilibrium point and consequently my output equation have to, has to reflect this physical constraint. That is, 
Here I'm saying that my output is simply equal to the position and consequently my C matrix is a row matrix 1, 0. And D matrix is of course equal to 0. Okay, let's start with MATLAB and Simulink modeling. The first step is to define the system parameters and the system matrices. That is, we need to define the matrices A, B, C, and D. To do that, I will simply paste this script. Here is my spring constant. This is KS, or in equation, this parameter over here. KD is so given over here. KD is given over here in my equations, and mass is given over here. This is the mass term. Then I simply define the system matrices A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. And I define an initial condition for my simulation. Here I assume that the initial condition is 0, 0. That is, x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 0. Next. Let's open the Simulink environment. You can do that by simply typing Simulink. And let's create a blank model. Okay, here's our model and our environment. In order to properly model this system in Simulink, we first need to analyze this equation. From this equation, we can actually obtain x by integrating the right-hand side. And consequently, in our Simulink model, we need to include an integrator. To include the integrator, I double-clicked, left double-clicked, and I will type integrator. Here's my integrator block. Expand this block. I need to create AX plus BU. To do that, I first need to create this multiplication, A times X. To do that, I will need a gain block in my Simulink environment. Again, double click and type gain. Here's the gain. Now you can rotate this gain like this and expand the block. Okay, perfect. From here, that is, the output of my integral is x, and I need to connect the output of the integrator to my gain. My gain will simply be a matrix A. So if I double-click on the gain, I need to specify here the parameter, that is the matrix A. And over here, don't forget to specify that this is matrix multiplication. Consequently, you need to select matrix K times U. Okay, now, you, hear, you can see here a warning, and this warning tells you that A is not defined. So let's go back to our script, and let's define A. To define the A matrix, you simply need to select this block and to load these variables in MATLAB memory. That is better to say MATLAB workspace. Simulink can see A, B, C, and D as well as other variables in our workspace. And consequently, over here, if I run this block, I will not see this error. Okay, the next step is to create this part over here, B times U. To do that, we first need to specify U. In my simulations, U will be a simple step signal and consequently I need to find the step block, here it is, expand the step block, double click on step block and choose the start time as 0. Click on OK. This is our U. Next, we need to add here B matrix, that is we need to create this multiplication, B times U. Following the same procedure, we double click, we click on gain, and here's our gain. Expand this block, open the block, and type here B. Over here, make sure that you select matrix multiplication and click on OK. Connect these two parts, 
And let's see. This is b times u. This is a times x. We are missing this plus sign. That is, we are missing the sum. To do that, double click and type sum. Here's our sum. Expand this block. Connect this part and connect this part. And connect this part. The final step is to properly set our initial conditions. We can do that by double clicking on the integrator and over here we will specify x0. And you can see immediately that Simulink is able to recognize the variables from the base workspace. Perfect. Here's our x0. And finally we need a scope in order to plot the results. So let's search for the scope block. Here it is. Expand this block. However, we are missing one part over here. We are missing c times x. That is, we are missing this part given by the equation number 6. Let's create that part. Again, we need a gain. Here's the gain. Expand the gain. This is now our c matrix. And don't forget over here to adjust the multiplication since you're multiplying vector x times c. Connect the corresponding blocks. And that should be it. Click over here on simulation. Adjust the time. Let's select, for example, 100 seconds. And let's run the simulation. And let's see the output. Okay, let's see the output by double clicking on the scope. And here's our output. Perfect. The system is not very well damped. This is because the KD constant is not very large. We can of course change KD constant and make the system more damped. When you're doing something for the first time, it's very important to compare your results with some baseline. And let's do that. So I'm going to simulate this system completely from a MATLAB script. And then I will compare the results obtained by simulating the system from this script with these results. And in that way, I will make sure that I completely and accurately modeled my system in Simulink. To perform the comparison, we first need to export some variables from our Simulink model to MATLAB workspace. To do that, I'll search for block to workspace. Here's the block. And I will select this output. That is, I will export the output of the system to my MATLAB workspace. Let's run again the block. And let's see what happens in our command window. Let's type who's. Aha! Uh -huh. Over here we can see the structure out and let's investigate that structure. Cool. There's an out and out has certain fields. So let's try to see this field. So I will type out dot sim out. Perfect. Okay, so I have two interesting arrays, time and data. Let's plot these variables. To do that, I will create a new figure. I will call this figure 1. I will type hold on and then I will type plot. Let's see what to plot. Simulation out or better to say out dot out dot simulation out. Then I need time dot time and over here I need to plot my data or data let's see what happens voila here's the output of a system in the MATLAB figure and this output completely matches the output shown on our scope. 
In order to simulate this system from the script, I will use the MATLAB command or function SS. Consequently, I will define a system1 and I will type SS and I will specify the system matrices A, B, C and D. Over here, I will create a time vector that will be a row vector starting from 0 with a step, let's say, of 0 0.1 until 100. Then, I will type something like this. Is equal to step, and I will simply specify my system, system1. And I will specify the time. This function step will integrate our state space model and it will compute the output. Let's do that. Okay, let's plot the result on the same graph. Over here I need to type plot, time returned, and my output. The output is ys. And in order to distinguish two lines, this will be red and this will be blue. Let's see the results. However, first close the original figure and let's see what happens. Voila! You can clearly see over here that the two simulation results match almost perfectly. Of course, there are some errors. These are probably due to the integration errors or maybe interpolation errors. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you liked this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.